everybody. Welcome back to another rat breeding and care video. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and go check out our Instagram pages where I post daily original photos of our life, our animals, and everything in between. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about a little bit about rat genetics, as well as my opinion on Rodent Pro. If you didn't see our last video, I'll post it here or here where we put in a large order through Rodent Pro because we are rebuilding our colony because we moved to a different state. So my final thoughts and opinions on them, let me give those to you right now and then we'll get into the rat genetics. So here is a short little video clip showing you two different rats. The one on the left is going to be the rat that I raised in my colony. It is one that I fed healthy, happy rat that I humanely euthanized and froze for later use. Now the one on the right is a rat from Rodent Pro. Now, if you line up the heads, you can see that this is an animal of the similar age and size. Both have similar tail lengths as well as they are both male. And you can see the, the size and the girth of their body that this rat is not as healthy and as nutritious as the one that I raised myself. Now, as we've been feeding um, a lot of the rats I got from Rodent Pro over the last few weeks, we've been noticing a couple issues as well as uh, freezer burn, which is something that I touched base in the other video that I posted. I've noticed that a lot of the rats are not healthy. They're not sized properly. Um, some of the rats that I got, I got uh, fuzzies, I got pups, as well as smalls and mediums. And in the pup bag and as well as the fuzzy bag, you can't tell the difference between one size to the next, as well as the smalls. I feel like I got weans in my small bag. I paid for smalls and I got weans. It, the sizing is just not consistent along, which was very, very disappointing. Um, I know a lot of people who use Rodent Pro and like them very much, but our experience, um, as much as possible, I will not be ordering from them again. I am not pleased with the quality of the rodents that they are providing. I think they're skimping a little bit on health and feeding. Uh, the rats could be fed a lot better, could be a lot more plump. Um, for me, I just prefer to raise my own. Now, let's get into rat genetics. Now, on one of our last videos, when I touched base on our hairless male, uh, I had a, a commenter who commented, kind of giving us a little insight, saying that a lot of time hairless males will pop out, um, or their offspring, uh, they will pass on to their offspring, uh, either being hairless or sometimes creams. Um, now the way they explained it in the comment was uh, that creams or the kind of uh, light brownish color um, is more of like a recessive trait where you have to have two copies of the gene. So in this particular litter, the male was, he went mated back to his daughters that we uh, produced here a couple months ago. And also that the hairless are more of like a recessive gene, whereas uh, black colored rats, uh, the black hooded's, those are more of what we consider a co-dominant gene where it's kind of like a 50-50 chance whether you're gonna get it um, in your litters. So I am super excited to kind of show you uh, what we produced in these recent litters. I was super excited because I was very disappointed that I had to leave a lot of my different colored rats behind. Um, I feel like certain colors um, have a different personal, I mean, all rats have different personalities, but I feel like with different rats come different temperaments. For example, a lot of my albino rats are one, not as friendly, uh, they're very nippy. And I don't know if that's just because it's albino and albinos tend to not be able to see very well to begin with, so that could be part of it. Um, but let me go ahead and show you this litter because I'm super excited to share it with you guys. All right.
So Mama is a black hooded, also one of our blacks right there. Those are the mamas and these are all the little babies. Oh my gosh, look, we got so many of these little hairless. They're still kind of fuzzy. Um, as they get older, they will lose their, their little peach fuzz they got going on. And we also got some of these, which are really cute. And they're cream hoodeds. How beautiful. Hi. Hi. We also got a few black ones, Mama. No. And then we got some of these whole creams. Some of these girls we're going to be keeping. So pretty. Look at, there's a little black hairless guy. Where is my one? There's a male in here that I am for sure keeping. Here's a hairless hooded. Here, this guy has it. Let's see. Where are you? Oh, he doesn't. He's a little shy. He's trying to find one. We also noticed that we have Dumbo ears. Daddy passed on Dumbo ears. But so much came out. No, 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 no. No, now we're getting all frisky. No, mama. But we got so much variety out of these litters. There's 29 babies in here right now. They're all gonna be weaned next week, so they're gonna be going over to their own tub. So right now it looks kind of chaotic in here. Because <laughs> they are still feeding off mama. Especially these hairless. All right, come on. We'll show some video clips as I talk. Okay, so as you can see, we got a variety of hairless. Um, I still need to sex all of them out, but it looks like the majority of the hairless are males. So I don't know if that's a genetic thing or not. I'm going to have to do some further research. You can also drop a comment down below because that's where I've been getting a lot of my information is from you guys, the viewers. And then I go double check everything and research some things. And it's really interesting to kind of see what parent passes on what genetics and so forth. But it was super exciting to see Dumbos and hairless and all different color hairless and the creams and the cream hoodeds. And I was not expecting to get all that just from our one hairless male. A lot of the creams do have the red eyes and they do have the whitish fur so they can kind of pass as an albino, but I don't think they're, they're not, they're not a true um, albino. Um, even though they carry on the trait of the red eyes. Um, but yes, ret genetics are a little more in depth and I'm still discovering new information and learning about them. So as I know more, I will share more with you guys. Super awesome. So that is kind of it on those particular litters. Like I said, uh, those will be weaned next week and they'll be moving to their own tub. So they're getting kind of crowded in the tub they're in. I will be probably moving everything but the hairless. Hairless burn a lot more calories than the other rats that have the longer fur because it takes a lot more calories to keep themselves warm. So I'm probably gonna leave those babies in with mama for an extra week just so they can get that extra nutrition from mama before I transfer them over to another tub. Now, because of where we live, they just huddle together and they do stay warm. Um, our hairless male, we have n absolutely no problems he kind of huddles up with the other females and he stays warm and he's just fine. Um, so no worries there. But I have noticed that the hairless do need to stay with mom an extra week just to get that extra nutrition just because they burn so many calories. And I have noticed that they stay a lot thinner than the other, uh, the other babies as well. It's not that they're unhealthy. It's kind of just they burn more calories to stay warm. Now, the other thing I want to share is we had another set of mamas. We had four brand new mamas that laid a, or laid, I say lay like their eggs, uh, but they had some big litters this week. Um, we have a total of 51 babies in the tub. I counted them all today. They were born just a few days ago. They had them within a 12 hour period, all of them. So far, all of them are doing well. There's one or two that I think might not make it. They were a little small and runty, so we'll just have to see over the next couple days. But that is good to see because our colony is finally growing and is gonna be sustainable for our snake collection again. 
Um, a lot of the babies that I just showed you that are going to be weaned next week, we are keeping a lot of those for future stock. And I'm kind of keeping a few for pets because I really love rats, despite what people think about rat breeders and having to feed snakes and things. I really love rats. So I kind of keep my favorites as my personal pets. So the last thing I want to share with you guys is our mice. We had picked up some mice a couple weeks back and our mice have had a ton of babies as well. We are overflowing in mice babies right now, which is good because we are going to be having hopefully a lot of snake babies here in the upcoming months. So that is very good that our mouse colony is doing well and hopefully we'll have enough to feed our babies in the future. So that is it for today's video. I hope you liked this little update video and showing off a little bit of the rat genetics and we'll see what comes out of it in the next couple months. And like I said, if you know a little bit more rat genetics, go ahead and share a comment down below. And thank you to the viewer. I will throw his, his or her uh, comment up right here so you can see it. But thank you so much for sharing. And that was so interesting. I wanted to wait till the babies actually um, started developing their fur to be able to share this with you guys. And it's kind of cool to go along this journey with you guys. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, stay safe, stay sane, get out there and make your own footprints. It's so awesome. Bye.